Today we're going to attempt and restore a 1970s Tonka cement mixer. I've featured one other Tonka truck on the channel and the restoration was actually quite enjoyable. They're really simple toys and they last forever. Also my grandson absolutely loves the last one. He still plays with it to this day. So why not do another? As you can tell the condition of this is not terribly bad. I prefer them in the worst condition possible just to show you the transformation but this one does present quite a bit of rust, especially under the paint. There's also a cracked windshield. We do have the cement mixer there. It's not broken. For some reason, it was just removed from the actual mount. Now the mixer itself is in very rough condition. So I need to figure out a way to actually partially restore that because it is made of plastic first thing I need to do is remove the three axles. There are these small tabs. You simply bend them out of the way and remove the entire assembly. After that I'll remove the assembly that holds the mixer in place. It also has two tabs. They're a little bit more stubborn. They form like a little L shape and you have to slide them through the chassis of the vehicle. And last but not least, the cab portion. There are also two tabs there. You simply bend them straight and pop the cab off. Once the cab's removed, I can remove the interior as well as the glass. I'll drop all the pieces into my aircraft stripper goo jar. Sounds like a good name. After one or two minutes, I can simply just brush off the paint. Then follow up by cleaning all the parts in the parts washer, all the metal parts and all the plastic parts using a variety of brushes and the cleaner itself. Once I have the paint stripped off and a good clean, we can really see all the rust that is hiding underneath of that paint. We're gonna use some Metal Rescue. I love this product, I used it on my bandsaw build which is featured on the other channel and I've used it for a variety of projects. They actually sent me this small container out of the blue and a letter just asking me to try their products. They didn't ask for a video but little do they know I've got like a gallon of it in the garage. I use it all the time and you can really see the difference here. There's the clean side versus the rusty side. Excellent product. And here I just want you to get a better look of the actual condition of the cab. It is completely rusty. The rear frame was that way as well. Not quite as bad. And the base is not as bad either. But that cab is, is really bad off. So we're going to put everything in the metal rescue. Then after that we clean everything off with the wire brush. And this is what we end up with. Most of the metal pieces looked almost as good as new. The metal rescue did a great job. And Almost all of those products do a really good job, so I'm not only plugging Metal Rescue, but any of the Rust products out there, they do about the same. I encourage you to give them a try, any of them. You'll be uh, quite impressed. And for some reason here, I decided to do a dry fit. I'm not sure why, I just did it. So, it's not like I'm assembling a real car with modifications, but... Uh, Apparently I thought so at that time. For paint, I want to give all the metal a good clean with some degreaser. I'm using Zep. You can use any degreaser, it just happens to be what I have on hand. I'll scrub it in real good with the toothbrush and then I will rinse it off with some water. 
all while wearing gloves. You do not want to touch the bare metal. And then I will let it air dry before I paint. After all the pieces have air dried, I will prime with automotive sandable primer. You don't need to use sandable primer. I'm doing so because there are some slight imperfections and I want to use sandpaper to sand them out. Sandable primer is just a little bit thicker, a little bit rougher, basically what the name implies. It's sandable. Then I sand all the pieces down with some 400 and 800 grit. You can start lower and you can go higher. This seemed to work well for this application. Time to paint. We're going to use this rust oleum, sunburst yellow. It's very close to the Tonka yellow, at least from my research. From what I can tell, it's spot on, so we're just going to go with it. And it goes on very smooth, and I don't have to use any clear coat, which is another added bonus. Now I have to take a look at that cement mixer itself. It has this plastic or something on there. It would not come off. I've tried all kinds of removers, paint remover, everything, dental pick. It wouldn't come off, so we're going to visit that later in the video. For now, I'll use some soapy water and a toothbrush to clean up the wheels. I did not need to whiten these. They were already white enough. Oddly enough, as bad a shape as this was in, the wheels were fairly white. It was quite amazing. It gave the interior a good clean. It did not need any whitening either, but I wanted to try something different in this video. Last Tonka video, I used this developer as well as some saran wrap and an ultraviolet light to whiten up all of the white parts that have been yellowing over the years. This one really doesn't need it, but there's a little bit of yellow there, and I wanted to try this new toy I got. I'm still going to use the saran wrap, but the source is different. We're using a UV oven. This is made for dental products, like models, that kind of thing. And I just wanted to give it a shot. We're going to put it in there for five minutes. Now, the last time I did this, I set it out for 24 hours under a small ultraviolet light that I got from Amazon, and it worked great. So I'm kind of curious as to what this is going to do. As you can see, that part is kind of glowing in there. Not really, it's just the orange ultraviolet light. Once the five minutes is up, I'll remove it from the oven and wipe it off. Now, I did notice some difference, not a huge difference, but the part wasn't bad to begin with. I think if I would have left it in there maybe for the full eight minutes on the timer, it would have done even better, but this is just a trial. Cement mixer, perfect solution, sandable primer. I had no other options that I could find, so primed it really well, sanded it down, and then I used some Rust-Oleum white paint and uh, just painted it white. And it's not perfect, but it looks a hundred times better than it did before. So, I'm happy. For a little assembly, we'll pop the cement mixer into the frame. Look at our glass. This is the original glass. It's cracked in bad condition. I had one from another Tonka. It's not exactly the same. It's a little bit different. The cement mixer happens to have like raised portions for the side windows, whereas this one does not. It's all I have. It looks a lot better than the original, so it's going to have to do. It just needs a good clean. Again, warm soapy water and it looks almost as good as new.
back to the assembly once again. We'll slide the window in place, followed by the interior. Slide the cab into place and then bend back our tabs. Reinstall the three axles. Install the rear frame with the cement mixer and bend those tabs back as well. Last Tonka restoration, I created some water slide decals on the printer, and luckily I still had three left, so I just had to cut those out and put them on. And one last check to make sure everything functions properly before I give it to the little guy. He's going to love this. And just like that, it's finally done. It's only taken about eight months. I mean, I haven't been working on anything. This has been sitting down here in pieces for eight months. And my grandson, every weekend he comes over, Papa, are you going to finish my truck? So this was a really fun restoration, probably one of my most enjoyable, not only because my grandson loves it, that's kind of my number one priority, but they're just a lot of fun to restore. They're easier to work on. They're bigger, so they're easier to paint, easier to see. I'm 45 now, and my eyes aren't as good as they were, you know, four years ago, let's say. So keeping that in mind, but... Tonkas are kind of hard to come by. There's not a whole lot of them out there. There's not a big, huge variety, and I like to find them in rough condition. I do have one more, which is a dump truck. That'll be here, I don't know, I'm not going to promise anything, but eventually. And it's in pretty rusty condition as well. I'm hoping it turns out as good as this one, and I uh, can't wait to do that one. That might be the next project, but I think we're probably going to do another Hot Wheels, Matchbox, something like that. But So stay tuned for that. And hopefully I'll be able to make more videos in general. Right now I'm on a reduced schedule because basically the world's coming to an end. So you should see more videos popping up here and there. I want to take one last look at the transformation. This is what we started out with, which was a hot mess. But even looking at the video now, the wheels were oddly enough pretty clean, which is really weird. It uh, Usually they're really yellowed, and especially with this m amount of rust, they've been sitting outside in the dirt. So apparently this was just sitting outside on a sidewalk or something, because it's not dirty. It was just rusty. And once again, the transformation. I'm really happy with the end result, but more importantly, my grandson's going to love this. I cannot wait for him to come over this weekend. He's going to love this thing. He's going to beat the crap out of it. He'll have it for years. His other Tonka that I did not, what, two years ago or a year ago, he still has it. It's still in great condition. There's maybe one scratch on it. That was done with Spectraflame paint by the Redline shop, and it's holding up very well. So he can add this to the collection, and then the next one, he'll add that to the collection, so on and so forth. Maybe he can give them to his kids. They can give them to their grandkids. Who knows? Love to see these things around 100 years from now. Of course, I won't be here to see it. None of us will, but it would be a pretty cool story. If you'd like to check out that other Tonka build, below the video in the description, I will put a link to that build, as well as links to all the tools that I use throughout the video, the paint, the metal rescue, and any of the tools that I use in this video will also be located down there. They're Amazon links, so if you're interested in any of those, be sure to check those out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. And as always, Thanks for watching.